Everyone has been keeping up with the case of the missing Titanic submarine. This story has captured the attention of everyone across the world as we're all keeping up with the latest updates. D.L. Hughley would even tweet, why would anyone go to the Titanic? Didn't they see what happened to Jack? Now, for those that don't know, on Sunday, a submersible carrying five people went underwater with the intention of visiting the wreckage site of the Titanic. Things went awry when the submersible lost contact one hour and 45 minutes into their two hour trip. A search party has been looking for the group ever since. Now, to make matters worse, the submersible had 96 hours worth of oxygen for its passengers in case of an emergency. As of Wednesday morning, there has been an estimated of 24 hours of oxygen left. Today, we have Recovery Hype analyst Yamanika Saunders and Pierre calling into the shows to give their thoughts and reactions. I'm going to be honest. I've been watching this nonstop. I've been researching, researching, researching. So I feel like an expert on this case. Pierre, let me bring you in. You know, DL is saying, you know, why would you go down there? What's your reaction to this? And do you agree with DL? One thing, first of all, my heart goes out to those people, for real. I mean, nobody deserves to die. I don't give a damn what they mistakes they made in life. They don't deserve to die. Okay, so let's get that, let's get that clear. Um, it's another case of rich people's problems. You know, when you got too much money, you try to do some extra stuff in life a lot of times. And I think this is an extra situation. Um, and but when it comes with me, when it comes to my breathing and what's going to hold air to me and what I breathe, and I need to breathe. I don't play with that. You can ask any girl I make love to. I don't stay under the covers more than uh, 30 seconds, okay? And that, that damn that, I pop my head up. I can't stay down that long because, you know, I got to breathe too now, okay? So with that being said, I don't play with anything I do with my breath, okay? Holding my air. So I'll say that much. Now, Yamini, yeah. you talk. You tell me what, how you don't care about men not breathing around you making love. Oh, okay? my God. I, <laughs> first of all, I'm like, you only stay under the cover for 30 seconds. You probably only stay in the pussy for 30 seconds, too. Woo! Now, let me... Um... That's all that's needed sometimes. <laughs> I got to go to work, okay? I got shit to do. I can't I stand know. you. I can't. Let me stop. You, you know what it is? It's... You know, and sometimes people are like, where, where's the comedy at? We, we we talk about a lot of serious things. It ain't nothing funny about that. That's one of the worst ways, I think, to like know you are going to lose breath and oxygen and all the things. There's organ failure that happens with that. The, t the Titan was not up to standard. And what I found out when I was doing some research on this is there's a whole industry called high risk travel. And a lot of people, because we have, uh, they have some wealthy Pakistani men on there, a man and his son. They have a billionaire on there. They've got, the, I mean, it costs like $250,000 just to get on this. So th these are things that, you know, rich people do to say that they have experiences outside of what regular people can say that they can have. You know, I went to the moon. I went, you know, Jeff Bezos, he's too busy trying to go to the moon. It's like, nigga, go run Amazon. You know, you don't, you already at the moon. Had the moon come in. So rich people problems, you know, <laughs> um, high risk for, for me and Pierre is to see if we can go get an ice cream cone in Compton after 11 p.m. Hell so, no. You, I'm going to go to the submarine. I'll take the submarine before I do that. I'll take know. the submarine too. <laughs> but but um, it, it's, it's, it's sad. It really is, you know, but you got to watch them waivers. I went to a water park and, uh, and I uh, fractured my... Uh, my hip bone uh, um, uh, at the bottom. Once you sign them waivers, they like, if you die, that's on you. So we need to really think about these things when we signing off telling people we okay to give up our lives and situations. But my God, I pray that something, a miracle happens because that's gotta be one of the worst experiences. And don't, and try not to go places where people's spirits have already died. I'm not trying to be funny about it, but you know, the Titanic, all these spirits and stuff down here and, and they energy and you trying to go down there and, and you, you know, in that place that's holding all that negative energy and vibe, that could be what's holding them down there too. Let, let, let's, let's really think about this. You know, we need to let expert do certain things a couple of times before civil, civilians get to do the stuff. You know what I'm saying? Let other people go down there a couple of times and see that it works. But sometimes, again, like I said, rich people's problems, we want, they want to be the first. I got enough money to be the first. 
That's why black folks don't get caught up in that stuff because we know he's like, ah, let someone else do it a couple of times before right. I do it. Let me make sure yeah. this thing works correctly enough times before I jump out in there. And I don't care, even if you're rich, sometimes rich people, you know, black rich people, uh, you know, don't even try to push the envelope so far. But a couple of times, you know, it has, unfortunately, but yeah. Yeah, and what Yamanika said too, Yamanika mentioned the the waiver. So the, the waiver actually says that this is an experiment it's not approved or credited, and it also lists 10 ways that you could, could die, and one of those being as you're getting into the actual craft, you could die. So as you're signing the waiver, as you mentioned, Yamanika, yeah, it is important to read it, and they actually did read it on camera. But I do want to play a clip because both of you are mentioning this is rich people problems, and everybody is feeling the exact same way. I want to take a look at this guy and come back and get your reactions on this clip. What is it with these billionaires in these fucking tubes? What, because they want to see the Titanic? You can just fucking rent it on VHS. It's a two cassette. They paid a quarter million dollars each. It's riveted shut. There is one button and there's a screen that is has the camera pointed at the Titanic. And the guy running the company is so fucking dumb that he didn't even think to just fake going to the Titanic. Remember Elon? Remember Elon and his submarine idea? Tube. Jeff Bezos? We're gonna go to space. He built a tube. So if you wanna rip off a billionaire, here's what you do. Hop in my tube. Turn the fucking screen on. Play the beginning of fucking Titanic. There you go, billionaire. And here's the thing about billionaires. Nobody fucking tells them no. Because billionaires just fucking drop money around them all day. So now they spend a quarter of a million fucking dollars. And now we have to spend millions of dollars to look for these goddamn idiots who just should have watched a VHS tape from a movie that is so old that fucking Leonardo DiCaprio wouldn't date it. Now, Pierre, I'm going to come to you, but a couple things I want to note first. So this craft, it does have one window. Um, they are lo looking at a screen, so he was accurate in that, but I do want to note that it does have a window. But, Pierre, let me get your reaction. Also, you know, there is a conversation of, you know, people with a lot of money doing things that could possibly harm them and harm other people. Should there be some type of way to regulate or is it possible to regulate, you know, I guess, I don't know if it's how they spend their money or, or just how they're moving. Because in this instance, like I said, it wasn't approved. It's not a credit. It's not credited. Now we have five people that are severely in danger. What are your thoughts, Pierre? First of all, my Jesus don't curse like that. God damn, Jesus. I know Jesus cuss like that. And Jesus lived down in his mother's basement. God damn, he in the basement of his mama's house. Okay. You know, you know. Mary got the upstairs house. And, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Damn. I ain't never heard of Jesus. And Jesus ain't got 2020 vision. Come on, man. Come on, Jesus. Oh, come on, brother. You got to get the vision together. All right. On a real note, um, like we were saying about rich people's problems. Um, yeah, rich people can buy certain things. They can buy things and push the envelope. Money talks. We live in a capitalistic world, America. Money talks over everything. I'm going to talk about two people who passed away because of because of rich people problems. Y'all might get y'all asses in the bind, but I don't give a damn. It is what it is. One is Aaliyah. Let me tell you, they let that man put more luggage on that plane because he was Aaliyah. And they want and I know two people who passed away. I know personally two people who passed away. I know how it rolls. They want to put more luggage. If me and uh, Yamanique says, let me put one more luggage on it, it's, it's like up the weight. Most pilots are like, hell no. Nah. But when you're Leah, you're famous enough, they say, you know what? I want to do one more play. It's you. So they buy into the richest people, you know, situation. Same thing with Kobe Bryant flying that helicopter when it's foggy outside. He didn't shoot you to the floor that helicopter, but Kobe wanted to go. And that person, that pilot figured, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, Kobe, let me do it. Me and Yamanika couldn't have got that flight going with that weather like that. So sometimes it's rich people's problems. Yes. When people, by into the people being rich and doing whatever for them and, and risking their lives or people who are rich decide, you know what? I want to risk my, I'm willing to take the challenge. I got enough money to make someone do what I want them to do to do some crazy stuff. So unfortunately, I'm glad I ain't that rich. That, you know, people ain't going to do what they want well, for me, but sad. And at the end of the day, it's sad on both of them, Aaliyah, uh, Kobe Bryant, and these people down there right now. You got to be careful just because you got the money don't mean you should be doing everything. Yeah, Monica, let me bring you in. I'd love to get your reaction to the video, but same question for you as well. Do you think, you know, should there be some type of regulation when it comes to, to people with that much money that can just do anything because money, you know, money talks here? I think it's easy for us when it is billionaires to go on these tirades about how ridiculous they are. I mean, 
that young white man who did look like a young Jesus Christ in Nazareth who died on the cross for my sins and yours um, seemed to be very perturbed. It was two minutes and 46 seconds of him running around. And I was just thinking, well, you could just turn this water into air. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> that way they can breathe. Um, if Pierre and I need to get somewhere, Pierre, no, he just going to jump on my back. I'm arriving to wherever he got to go. <laughs> okay, that's number two. Um, I think they had everything in place, which I think is a problem, right? Is I think sometimes you're so rich, you think I can't be a billionaire and also be in some tragedy because life has blessed me. Um, from my understanding, they had the CEO of the company go down with them. So that was already, you know, you got one of their high executives who knows what's happening there. He's taking these people down. They're letting them know it's all good. I don't know if it's the first time that this was an excursion. I think they have done it a couple of times. I yeah. think the, the, the biggest issue is that it was not up to standard. And that's what I would like to know. Do these people know that are in there that it wasn't up to these standards? Because we sign waivers and a lot of times when people say, oh no, you know, it's not like that. We've done it a thousand times. This is just for that. And people go, okay, you know, I, I, I feel that I, the risk is okay because you are assuring me. And at $250,000 a pop, I'm sure they weren't telling those people what the real deal was and that they didn't have certain things that they really needed and required to go down to those depths. So... I pray for everybody's spirit down there. Um, it's nothing but men down there. So that the fact that I'm praying about men ought to tell you that <laughs> I don't hate men. Um, but um, I don't have it in me. For those people who seek thrill like that, and I know it's in a drill. And I, when I got my first tattoo, I was desperate to get another one. Even though it was painful, it was something that was addictive to me. When you hit those addictive strides, I gain, so I get competitive and I'm addictive. If you have that competitiveness or you have that sense of adventure, you have to also resign yourself to the fact that you may not live when you are a thrill seeker like that. So yeah. God bless them, but you know. Yes, definitely send in our well wishes, prayers, and thoughts um, to them and their families um, because, you know, their families are also having to see this um, and watch this play out in addition to everybody commentating on it as well. Um, so, yeah, you know, definitely sending our well wishes. I think the most recent updates right now is that they did hear sounds. Um, they sent in a Canadian aircraft and they were able to detect sounds, but that was about last night. So they have about until this afternoon, late evening or mid-evening, um, in order to, you know, beat the clock in order to save these people. So all well wishes to them. Now we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're actually going to be joined by Joya to lead us in You Be the Judge. And we actually have a very special guest, Jason Mitchell, joining us. I'm super excited about this. Stay tuned right after this. Hey Hypers, welcome to You Be the Judge for Hype News. I'm Joya, your resident Justice Bay, and we dive into trending stories with a legal intersection for this segment. Today we have a very special guest with us, straight out of Compton's very own, the Shy's very own, and tons and tons of other notable projects. My New Orleans brother, Jason Mitchell. <laughs> welcome to the show. Doing? How are you feeling today? I feel excellent. I feel excellent. I'm happy to be here. Thank you guys for having me. No, thank you. I'm glad that we could finally nail you down for this interview. I know <laughs> you've been super, super uh, busy. And I heard on another interview that you cook a mean char grilled oyster. So I'm oh, going to yes. hold you. <laughs> I'm going to hold you. <laughs> Yeah, um, well, I have I have been busy. You know, I gotta um I really gotta give a good shout out to my friend Jaquavis Coleman because in the heart of the pandemic, he actually convinced me, like, why not just invest in yourself? You know, I felt like everybody had that same itch. You know, we've right. all been bitten by the bug and we're like, listen, we we gotta do something, you know. And COVID was shutting down all these different projects. I was supposed to do um a project called uh 50 Shots about Sean Bell. And actually, our director, you know, oh, my gosh, he just went through the worst. His mom actually got COVID and passed, and he got COVID. Mm. One of his kids got COVID. It was just, like, 
the worst, you know, and New York was shutting down. It was just really crazy at the time. So like, I'm really sitting back thinking like, what could I do? You know, so me and Jaquavis, we decided to take our own bread and do our own movie, you know, and right. then you know, we got the birth along with 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 Ekpe Udo, who um actually just became the uh, the assistant coach for the Atlanta Hawks, you know. So shout out to him, you know what I mean? But the, yeah. the, team, the team is making moves and um yeah, so everything is both is is on Apple TV right now and Amazon Prime, and you know, we're super proud of it. And I also have Call Her King on the way as well with Wes Miller and yeah. Naturi Naughton and Lance Gross and things are just moving. Things are just moving. Right. I just right. filmed the other day as well with uh with West called Black Heat, which is mm. really cool too. <laughs> yeah, yes, so things so are moving. You mentioned Fifty Shots, and for those who do not know, Fifty Shots is a bio biopic by um about Sean Bell. Sean Bell was an unarmed black man who was shot 50 times in Queens, New York, right before his wedding. Yeah. So I, I guess I wanna know, why were you so interested in telling this story? Because I think, you know, a lot of times when these tragedies happen, they, um, the media has a way of spinning it, right? And, you know, they actually ended up beating the case, the police, because they talked about the people around him. Right. And, you know, sometimes when you're from the hood, you can't help who you grew up with and, and who you end up, you know, having real love for. But Sean was not only a father, but was about to go to the Dodgers and be a pitcher, yeah. you know, was about to be married the next day. And I think a lot of times, you know, who the, the man is gets so washed in in, the, in these tragedies. And I just wanted his story to be able to live on because you know, they had so many people who looked up to him and who rooted for him. And he has such a great family. And, you know, they, we, we should talk about other things rather than him just being shot, you know, a bunch of times. You know, they shot into the car 50 times and they weren't even armed. That's, that's crazy. You know, and we hear too much about these kind of things. So um, this was my way of, of a nonviolent protest, I'd say, you know. Um, and I just, I just wanted his story to live, man. It was, it was so tragic. Right, and his story kind of follows other stories. And I'm so glad that big name actors, young actors like yourself are telling these stories. I also think about Fruitvale Station, uh, Michael B. Jordan, who told the story of Oscar Grant, um, where people need to tell the story of Michael Brown, the Ferguson protest, and also Philando Castile in Minnesota. So Sean Bell kind of, re his story reignited the attention on that type of negative interaction with police of unarmed Black men. So I undoubtedly believe that as long as these stories happen, they should be told um do you yeah. think that people are becoming desensitized to these types of stories absolutely absolutely i think that um violence has been the way of the uh, the oppressor for a very very long time and you know as black people you know we've we've went through stages of um resilience and, and and tenacity and all of these different things and we're still able to shine our light but a lot of times we get angry you know and and they label us really really easy like that so I think film is such a beautiful way to right. be able to transfer the facts and transfer the feeling without even having to, having to be afraid of of going to jail or what the next person might say you know like the guy who killed Sean Bell literally went out to um to a club i mean they got a picture with him in a in a in a bunch of females they popping bottles like they took him like a trophy you know right. what i mean like the the gun that was that killed Trayvon Martin was auctioned off for millions of dollars like you know it's these people are monsters these yeah. people are monsters and you know unfortunately for us we can't um have such a militant mind frame because it, it it puts us in a in in a, a questionable situation you know we have to make it back home to our families so um it's it's definitely something that that I feel that we need to do as actors you know right. like um when when I took my grandfather to see Mudbound like mind you he fell asleep during straight out of Compton in in the theater <laughs> right so when we when we went to see Mudbound he just literally had his arms yeah, like the entire time, 
in a suit. You know what I mean? So I was like, you know, you got to calm down. But he was, he just couldn't conceptualize how you, that, that people were paying me to do this or like this was a thing. And I was like, no, you know, this is what we've done in three generations. You know what I mean? And I think now he's he's kind of happy about it, but at first he didn't even really understand, you know? And, and to know that we made that much progress in that amount of time, you know, and my kids are coming home saying, daddy, we watched your movie today at school. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you're making progress, you know? Mm -hmm. We're not just like you're playing pretend, you know what I mean? And and, and having the, um, the roles that they don't want to give nobody else, you know, or just making black folks look dumb. Like, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to deal with that. I want us to really be able to talk about some real stuff and be able to, you know, teach the the generations to come. Well, you, well, well, one thing I was going to say is one thing I appreciate what you said um, about doing the Sean Bell story is, you know, we you're humanizing these, these, these people, these victims, you know what I'm saying? And so many times it's just wrapped around the incident, a black man got killed, when he re reached for something, he ran. It's just about that. And it's not about the person. And we as Black people need to also continue to see that, you know, we know that these people are that, but we need to, to put that out to the world that these are decent human beings. You know, a lot of times this is not a about the, you know, the, the, the incident, at, you know, that just happens so that other people can see, hey, man, all the people you're killing aren't just thugs, you know, just shooting. These are some regular human beings that are good people. That, uh, and I praise you for, for you know, making movies and we should make more movies of incidents like that and say, hey, man, these are regular people. So maybe it could change the mindset of the bigger people in you know, a picture, the white Absolutely. cops, the white people thinking we're just thugs. As soon as you see a dark skinned person or somebody with dreads, he's a negative. Well, not, right. not, it's not that, you know, so I pray, you know, I, I applaud you, brother, for doing I this. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I feel like I'm doing this for all of us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I feel like um, each and every person, you know, who I've had the, the pleasure of meeting has some sort of gift, no matter what that is. You know what I mean? We even see autistic people with, with these beautiful gifts. And mine just happens to be acting, you know? And and mm -hmm. it comes along with, uh, with, with responsibility, you know? I'm supposed to be telling some, some good stories and make sure these people are never forgotten. You know, when I met Mr. and Mrs. Mm -hmm. Bell, I never forget, like, she, she really was like, questioning me like why you want to do this like what is this all about to you it's just just a funny thing like I'm talking about grill me on the porch you hear me like she was not playing but but that's what it's really about because we forget that these people have families and have kids and have mothers and brothers and sisters and a lot of times are just really really good people so yeah it's definitely my responsibility to handle that I'd like to add in a, a portion too um that that's wild. You talk to the family on the porch, they didn't let you come in the house. Nah, they <laughs> wasn't playing that. They 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 very queens. Okay. Right. That's not yeah, playing that, no yeah, game. Right. They, <laughs> you your well, movie, but they met you today, so you can go and stay on the porch. You know, right. I mean? well, hopefully they uh after everything is said and done, you make it into the house. But one of the things that I really appreciate <laughs> is uh, and everybody knows that I'm a trained actor, and one of the reasons why I got into stand-up was because there were not any roles really that were geared towards uh, a character like me, a woman like me, a personality, uh, body composition, any of those things. So what I what I appreciate is I, I know growing up with white people that, that, you know, we do a lot of talking about they don't see us, they don't understand us, they know very well who we are, and they use that as an excuse right. to execute mm -hmm. force that um they know who we are um it is very it's not lost on me that most of the times when they murder us it is one of us that is doing right so they know what's what's going on but mm -hmm. what i appreciate is that we tell our own story instead of asking why there wasn't a story told when is hollywood going to tell a story that right. we tell our own stories and that we also again as we've been saying on this show invest in black creators, performers, actors, Black movies, give it as much tenacity as you would give um, a Hollywood blockbuster. And that way we can grow yeah. and have more independent projects that we get to tell the story of instead of waiting for white actors, producers, and directors in Hollywood to tell our story.
We're shifting gears a little bit with a Black man experiencing the criminal legal system in a negative way. Today, we're reacting to the newest development in the Jonathan Majors case. And of course, we have our star commentators, comedians, and analysts with us, Pierre and Yamanika, that will also offer their comments later in the show. But on yesterday, June 20th, Jonathan Majors appeared in a lower Manhattan court with his girlfriend, Megan Good, to face a misdemeanor simple assault <laughs> charge from an incident that happened in March of this year. After a status conference, which is a brief meeting of opposing parties to determine the outcome of a case, the judge set an August 3rd trial date for the actor. However, Majors attorney Priya Chaudhry said after a recent hearing that Majors is a black man weighing 200 pounds, whose current case highlights the racial bias that permeates the criminal legal system. She also states that Majors is the victim and that the alleged victim is not being consistent in her accounts of the incident. And she also says this is a witch hunt for majors. So there are several elements that make this case interesting from race to his involvement in the global MCU franchise and to who he is currently dating. So Jason, do you oh. think as an actor, <laughs> do you think he's gonna recover and restore his image after this? I hope so. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because like, no matter what happened, I feel like nobody deserves to lose their life and everything that they worked hard for. Because what I do know is that um, when 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 you're transitioning and you're you're making changes and you're constantly elevating, there's no handbook for that, you know, and there's there's no structure around turning you into a star rather than just putting you on TV. So, um, you know, a lot of times when when you're taking off, you you almost bound for a mistake because they got people sitting back watching you going, well, I hope he do his thing. I hope he do great. And I hope he do. And a lot of times you really need people around you to say something. You know, right. nobody wants to say anything because they like, oh, he must got it. You know, he's he's a big star. And I don't know if it's like a an underlying sense of jealousy or or maybe you know people feel like they're they're out of their um they're stepping out of place you know talking to you about certain things but like a lot of times it's easier to see things from the outside and see it before it even happens and people will still let you run into the wall you know so for me I just I know he um he's a wonderful actor you know he's somebody who I don't like me and him don't have a great relationship, but I do know him. You know what I mean? And and every every time I've had an encounter with him, it's been graceful, you know? And um I just I would I would hate to see him lose everything he worked for for a situation that like we don't really know much about. You know what I mean? Like I'm not one of those people who really read into the media and all that. You know, I heard it was like some text messages or something that came out, but like at the end of the day, like I wasn't there, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know either of them like that to be getting involved with their domestic disputes and all of this foolishness. But I really, I really well, you came to the wrong place because we gonna get, we get involved in it. <laughs> <laughs> and let me, let me hop in, Joy. Uh, let me hop in really quick, and then Pierre and Yamanika. I know I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step back out and let y'all, let y'all take it because I can see y'all getting ready. Um, Jonathan, I, I want to say first, thank you so much. Or, um, you know, with this case with Jonathan, you know, it, it's been a case that's been ongoing, right? Um, on the show, Pierre and Yamanika, I know we talked about Eddie Griffin when he was talking about, you know, black men don't leave Hollywood without that asterisk. Like, there's always an asterisk behind a black man um, after he leaves Hollywood. So I, I want to come to you and ask, you know, what do you think about, do you, I don't know, I guess, what do you think about that? Do you agree that, that it's, it's difficult for black men to leave Hollywood without that asterisk, especially when you're reaching, like we saw Jonathan Majors, excuse me, Jonathan Majors reach a height, right? Like he was at the height of his career. Do you, do you agree with Eddie Griffin that, you know, black men can't leave Hollywood without that asterisk? Absolutely. Cause I mean, it's no secret that I went through what I went through. Right. And still everybody is sitting back going, what did he go through? You yeah, know what did you go through? I don't know what, what did you go through. When I sat around at the round table with my team and, you know, I talked to them about the situation. They said, you know, Jason, we want to believe you. 
was like, sorry, what? You know what I mean? You guys are supposed to be my team. And on top of that, you know, they they did have enough nuts to tell me, like, you know, some of this is because you're black. Like it just, it just is what it is. Right. And you just gotta swallow that. You know what I mean? Like, cause I didn't, I mean, my situation wasn't even really a situation. It was just somebody yeah. who said something. And, you know, it, it it makes me a little bit tight that the person that said something was a black woman who used to tell me all the time, you know, I just love to see my young black brothers win. You know, I just, I just love this for y'all. I love this for y'all. But, yeah. you know, as soon as things didn't go her way, she tried to tear the whole show down, starting with Lena Waithe. You know what I mean? And she put some, 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 she put a story out that ultimately I think backfired so hard because she hasn't worked since then. You know, she, she made it seem like um, me and Tiffany Boone had an issue with each other. And I'm not really sure of, of Tiffany's situation, but I definitely feel like she got the, the shit into the stick. You know what I mean? Because, right, yeah. you know, like it, it's probably out there in the zeitgeist now, like, Oh, we know for sure Tiffany and Jason didn't have a problem, but you know, yeah. You know, it's right. out there now. So now people are looking at her as a problem as well, you know? Right. It's, a, it's like it, tri it trickled down. It's a domino effect now. Now it's affecting everybody. I will say, too, I appreciate your, your authenticity. Like, I appreciate your honesty, and I can feel that from you. I'm curious, though, as because I know you said as you're sitting at this table, right, it's very disappointing to know that your team doesn't have your back. What, what were you feeling, you know, to see Hollywood kind of take that turn on you or to see these people turn on you, what exactly were, were you feeling? Because I can only imagine what we're seeing, you know, Jonathan feel, you know, that, that we just don't have insight to. So just to get it from you, what were you feeling in your situation during that time? I just feel, felt like, like everything I was ever told about uh, um, my talent, about how wonderful of a person I was, all of those things was all a lie. For me, me sitting too. around that table, looking around saying, you know, not only do these people not care about me, and what we built together, but you don't care about my family. You don't care about my kids. You don't care right. about everything that matters to me. And that was just so heartbreaking. You know what I mean? Because like we done made real money together. You know, like I remember going to some of these Hollywood parties and they would call me, my manager and my agent, the dream team, you know, and they were sitting around saying, oh, you know, look at, look at, look at what's going on with you guys. You guys are the dream team, you know? And to see them just turn their back on me and say they want to believe me, I'm like, man, listen, because I was so ready to go to court. I'm all about it, you know, but I look at the big picture for what it is like, you know, I, I, I could have reacted better when I had the situation with Delta. But I mean, I paid nine, nine grand for a ticket. But then when I look back and retracted everything, I'm like, wait a minute. Delta is represented by UTA. Mm. Hmm. OK, so now maybe. It kind of all makes sense, you know what I mean? Because I had a, I had a, a legit case against them too. I wanted to take them to court, you know what I mean? Because I wanted to get them for defamation and character. They, I felt like they, they put out this story like, oh, he was late, and I no, 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 no. <laughs> I was not late. <laughs> None of that was real. But they didn't know who I was until TMZ, you know what I mean? So. I mean, it's it's just, it's sad to watch these things happen because they really, really don't care about us. So for me, you know, I don't, I have no beef with Hollywood, but I just look at it as a job now. You know what I mean? I would love to be in a, in a, um, a superhero movie and all of this good stuff, but until they call me, I'm going to be building for us on this side. Right. You know what I mean? I'm going to yeah. make sure... You know, in, in 25 years, we got award shows that are big. I'm going to make sure we got, you, you know, our own version of all of this. Because at the end of the day, we need to be the ones telling our stories. We can't be mad at them because they don't know exactly how to do it. You know, they don't know our culture. You know, like um, Denzel said it very well, you know. And for me, I just, I feel like um, it's up to us. You know, we can we can only complain for so long because they... They always going to treat us like we last. Absolutely. Uh, last question for you. And then Pierre and Yamanique, I'm going to open the floor and let Joya um, take over. Last question for you. And I guess it's a, it's a two-part question, right? Because in your explanation, it kind of feels like a sense of betrayal, right? Which I can only imagine. Like you said, you're connecting the dots. And even me looking at, you know, the things going back, it's like, mm, 
that doesn't make sense. If I pay that much for a ticket, I would be upset too. And I'm pretty sure anybody would be upset. So a two part question here. Do you think what we're seeing with Jonathan Majors, do you think we're seeing, you know, a similar thing of him being betrayed? And whether you believe that or not, what advice would you give Jonathan Major? I know you said that you know him, you don't have a close relationship, but if he is watching, what advice would you give him? Man, it's, it's, it's tough, you know, but I think, for one, don't let the media convince you that you're somebody you're not. You know, you with yourself every day. I don't personally know his situation or what he went through. Like I said, I, I, I stay out of that, right? But you can't let the noise in the room fog your mind to the point where you begin to self-destruct because it started with you and it should always finish with you. You know what I mean? If you got nothing else, you got God, you're going to be all right. You know, don't, don't, don't let this whole situation shake you up to the point where you forget who you are and where you came from. I love that. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm done. Sorry, Pierre. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm done. I just, I just love you being authentic. And thank you for, you know, being honest um, in this. As I said, going back, I know Joya did her research. I did as well. Um, it's just very authentic. And I love the energy that you give. So just thank you um, so much for that. But I'm backing up. I'm done. I'm sorry, Pierre. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I, I actually like that we're doing this right now, though, right? Because I think so many times, because um, this whole Me Too movement situation turned into a, a, a witch hunt at times. And I'm like, I feel like they got everybody. <laughs> no matter who you was, they, they got everybody. You know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's just scary to feel like, you know, you go through these things. And a lot of times when you're like young and you're single and you got bread and all of this stuff, it's like, it shouldn't feel wrong to want to date. It shouldn't feel wrong to be attracted to a woman. Like, but that's what the world is turned into today. You know what I mean? They got every grown single man with doing anything in his life, sitting with his tail tucked because we scared to death. Like, I can't even say that I'm interested in somebody now because I might get reported. You know what I mean? It's like, it's pretty crazy. You know what I mean? So, so hopefully, you know, we can. And we can take this consensus of how we really feel about a person, you know, or really look at the the evidence in a case or whatever it may be before we just start passing judgment because, man, the internet is crazy. Like, it, man, they, they take off with situations, you know? So hopefully we decide to start. Uh, Pierre and Yamika, uh, Jason does speak. bring up a really good point about race. In this case, you know, the alleged victim is a white woman. I, I believe that's something we can speak. And Jason is a black man. So when it comes to race in this case and the victim being a little bit inconsistent in her recounts of what happened, do you think that she's playing into it? Do you think that she understands the implication of race in this case? Who, the lawyer? Um, the victim. The victim. Um, the alleged victim. So the, let me just, let me let me dock in here and then Pierre can go after me that way we'll have uh, this female perspective. Sure. Um, you know, and, and I, you know, already know how you're going to get with me in the comments because uh, I, I want to be fair about everything. I do think that there are times when um, it is very difficult to navigate um this industry as a black person. What I don't like is, I don't think it's any, I, I, it's very hard as a black woman, you know, um, and we don't talk about that. Uh, not only that, not even just the lack of support that black women get to move forward. So I, I don't like when we divide um, uh, and, and say, well, this is based on that. This is, you know, gender and, and that. It's just hard in general for, to be black. Um, it is a delicate dance because the reality is that there are women that are being victimized um, and we don't want to um, negate that. I'm, I'm more line, along the line of what Jason said is we were not there, we do not know. I don't wanna be judge and jury for something as sensitive as this. If she was violated, that needs, to, you know, she needs to um, be vindicated for that and he, there needs to be recompense paid on his part. 
Um, I, I think what's dangerous is when we um, say that, he, you know, this is Hollywood going after a brother without also looking at the responsibility that as a brother in Hollywood, there are certain things that you need to be mindful for. And for as much flack as Black women get from Black men and degradation and down talk, uh, we keep hearing about how white people are trying to hold Black men down, but we see a large population of Black men in Hollywood who do have colorism, who do feel that they need to be with white women. And right. then when those things don't play out in their regard, then they wanna go back and have the protection of black women. That's the, the only reason why I'm really disappointed in Megan Good attaching herself to him because when it comes time to get help, they always coming back to mommy, mammy, oh sister, black women, please cover me under the blood of Jesus. And oh, then we've got to rescue them. Um, he knew going in what that white woman was about. And when if that's what she did, become a white woman to him and caring him, then you should have been prepared and had a fail safe for that. If you if he is innocent, that's unfortunate. But I am very careful in environments that I go into, especially as a black woman, knowing that people are going to say things about my attitude and they have. I can't question anything. I can't do certain things that white women do without being seen a certain way. So I'm very specific, especially with my team, about how I go into places and how we put ourselves there. So, and I do understand, Jason, I was in something very similar where I was engaged in a, uh, the statute of limitation, I'm sure, is gone from that. Um, but I'll talk lightly about it. I was engaged in something that was uh, violent, and it involved me and a Black uh, perf male performer. Um, and in the process of who I was friends with, and, you know, we've been able to um, resolve that. But I remember my lawyer saying, there's nothing I can do. So when you have your lawyer, <laughs> when you have your agents, when you have your managers, all these people have money in their eyes. I, I mean, I'm not saying that to disrespect my lawyer. I love my lawyer, who is amazing. We love um, lawyers. You know, but at the time, we have to remember they're about the money as well. We are fortunate if we have situations with managers who ride and die with us. Sometimes people have that. But when money, when it looks like money is gone and all that stuff, people get ghosts uh, very quickly. And there is no support system for us, especially um, when we're Black. Well, Yamanika, um, one person that didn't get ghosts for Pierre was Megan Good. <laughs> For, for uh, Jonathan with Megan Good. So Pierre, <laughs> I almost put you with Megan Good. No, so, she'll be dating Pierre next week. <laughs> he gonna be. Pierre, uh, what, what do you think about um, <laughs> Megan Good and Jonathan and their relationship? Because a lot of people have said it is a PR relationship. And what Yamanika said was, you know, he's running back home. What do you feel about that whole situation? And do you have any comments on the case in general? Well, there's a couple of things I want to say. One, um, um, I appreciate what Jason said. A um, couple things I'll say a little skewed with, with the with the me, with me Too movement. I've been in Hollywood. I've been behind closed doors. I've seen men be reckless with women. I mean, this is what it is. When you got money, they just yank on girls. I've been on rap concerts. I've been in acting places. I've been in trailers. You know, Jason knows what I'm talking about. I've been behind the scenes. Men have run yeah. amok, you know, with these women because they had money. Women didn't want to be in movies. They wanted parts. They wanted more lines. Whatever the case may be, women bring themselves to these men in these situations. And sometimes it's, tempta it's temptation. Guy might snatch on a grab and think it's going to go a little further. She plays it off like, hey, what's up? You know, I want to roll. But, you know, we start talking, whatever can happen. And so things happen. But I'm glad that the Me Too movement popped off so it could slow it down. You know, it ain't going to ever stop it, but it slowed it down for those who are abusing their power and their position. Like Jason said, sometimes you got to be careful what you're doing. Who are you doing? Because people will pop off. Some people plan that. Try to be sneaky and just try to put you in a bad position. But us as men, we got to be a little more cognizant of what's around us, who's around us, how we move, because we are a target. When you make money or you're famous, you are a target. Right. So, you know, it's our responsibility as men to back up and say, you know what? I like that big booty girl, but I ain't going to approach her this way. If I do, it could turn into something terrible. You know what I'm saying? Right. But we're men. Our loins are busted. We're ready hey. to get what we get. We're used to getting whatever we want. So it's a situation that's kind of hard to deal with, but you got to deal with it or your ass is going to be in trouble. That's the move. 
Me too uh, situation. Um, with this yeah. gentleman, um, Jason, uh, not, uh, what's his name? Um, um, his name Jason? Jason? Jonathan, Jonathan Major. Um, like, like, like Jason said, I don't know the situation. We all don't know. We weren't there with the Texas, what happened that night. We weren't there. We're just playing Monday, uh, Monday quarterback. So what we see from the outside. Um, right. If he did something wrong, you damn right he should get in trouble for it. Um, right. I don't care if he's white or black. It doesn't bother me. I'm so tired of it. I mean, the niggas, he's dis disrespecting a female if he's doing that. Um, the next thing is, you know, if he didn't do it, then shame on her. Let's find out. And, and he'll show up in court, hopefully, and he gets his way out of it. But the, the, the sad thing about it, some of the major part of this whole story is Megan Good. What the f is that the major? Why is that going to be the major story? This man about to lose his situation. Fuck who he brings in the, to court with him. He can bring a zebra in the court with him, all I give a damn about. But now the story damn near about why Megan Good with him. Who gives a f it doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be a story about that. It does not, not, that that should be the lead story. Is he guilty or not guilty? Is this man being railroaded? Is he being tricked on some shit? That's what I need to be concerned about. I don't care if Megan Good comes in there with him or not. I don't care if she's black or white. If it was another black woman, would it matter? Had it been a white woman, would you be mad if you brought a white woman? Well, because they, because, women, because women from the okay, so women are going to look at that right and a lot and go is she aligning herself with somebody who is a predator i mean i would be very careful i'm just to be just be real you know what i'm saying i would let the situation unfold and see what happened before i get into a relationship with somebody that is going through something like this i mean we have to be very careful but you don't know that he, she, she might have a conversation she might know him a little better than that and no he wouldn't do that he might talk to him but he could be a good you know, guy. I understand that. I'm talking about perce perception, right? What perception? Like, no, well, that's but the the business we are in the business of perception. You know, you and I are 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 not the way we're presented. You know, people are always come up to me and they the first thing they say to me is number one, they didn't know I was so short because my right. attitude makes me think I'm like seven feet tall. And the other thing is people always say they didn't know I was so sweet and loving because mm. when we come on here, we have to talk about issues it has nothing right. to do with who we are, you know, behind the scenes. I, I really hope and pray that Jonathan Majors, I mean this because a lot of the black men give me grief, grief and gripe because I call it like it is, but I really and truly hope that he is innocent of this because I think he is an amazing actor. But what we have to also remember is the unfairness of it is the craft of who you are and the person that you are oftentimes is intertwined. We don't know how to separate the actor, the singer, the athlete from the person that they are. You can be a complete asshole. You can be a complete predator. You could be all these nasty things and you could be an amazing performer. You could have someone who has skills that has been sent by God, you know? So that's where we are, uh, people judging. It's unfortunate also because white women have a history of lying, of crying, of playing mm -hmm. victim, but black mm -hmm. men also have a history of fawning over white women, being desperate for white women, beasting <laughs> for white women. So mm -hmm. we're really in a situation where we have to wait and see. And Woo! I still want to yeah, I would also implore black men, I just want to say this. Every time there's a situation with a black man and there's something violent, as a community, we jump to that black man's side and say, oh, no, 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 not him. It is a teardown. We do it so much so that we were not even able to see Megan Thee Stallion when she was victimized, when she was shot. Oh, immediately, that's not what immediately we went <laughs> against her. I know that's immediately. right. <laughs> and I know you guys are giggling, but it was immediate how we attacked Megan without any knowledge or information. Immediately, everybody was like, let's take his side because it's a brother being teared down. And that's why I talk about these issues because Black women are. That's what you heard. That's what you heard, Dominica. There were people, there were people on their side. No, that's what you heard. That's what you wanted to hear. You all, you know, it wasn't over hearing. what I wanted to hear. It was, was all over hearing. social media. I heard, I heard about it was them. everywhere that we could see it on social media. It's yeah, not what I heard. I heard what I heard. It's social media. It's no, it's the no. Listen, I don't even know. You can't do what I heard. Hold on a second. When you Jason tell me what I heard, what I saw, and he said, what I saw? when no, Jason you know came on here, we're not and doing that. We're not he doing had that. a you're situation. What I, saw and heard. I had no idea what he was talking about. That was you. I that was, was you. I did. Hold on. I did. 
So P.S. I, 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 I wasn't Mika, connected. We, we Hold on a second. <laughs> because I was not connected to Jason's situation like that. Mm -hmm. I had to be reminded what happened. I don't put that on him. When it right. was put out in the media, that's I what... Do. I just want you to know that I forgot it because I had moved on. Yamanique and Pierre, let me chime in. Uh, Jason, I didn't warn you on Wednesday. We it we take it up. I, well, I think Yamanika did. We take we it, kick up, it up a lot of notches. Oh, I, I, and I love it. I love it. I think it I think it drives conversation. Jason, let me let you um let me let you chime in. Go ahead, Jason. So I, I just wanted to say, you know, that is what it is, is it's social media. You know what I mean? And this is why I don't read the media, because I literally watch my situation go from misconduct to sexual misconduct because of social media. Mm -hmm. That's it. It wasn't because of what was really said or any of that. Like nobody ever came out and said, oh, he did this to me or he did that to me. But just because of social media public People opinion constantly did that right and and you know it's sad to say it was mostly black people well the thing about it right, right? now yeah. right kept it mm -hmm. it was also a super sad thing to me right because i was riding with one of my white partners one day and he was like you know what kills me with black folks in general is that like you guys are the only people who have been through what you've been through and still will create a platform to tear y'all down. There is no Watch version of, 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 uh, there's no white version of the shade room. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you know, we've had the tabloids and stuff since like the beginning of time, yeah, right? But like, it's always talking all about promotion for the most time. For well, the most TMZ part, is like, out there. Yeah, TMZ, National Enquirer. TMZ is out there. Come on now. No, but I know what he means. True, it's a different, but, I mean, it's a different it, flavor that's happening when versus black and white because the reality is it is that Stockholm syndrome that we are under. We hate each other because we have seen the reflection of hate and it has been ingrained in our system. It is true. When a black person is down, you can always count on black people to also kick you down. But I think right. if we can get out of social media, and this is why I was trying to make my point, I completely forgot what was happening with Jason because at a certain point, I moved from having that information in my head and then we moved on to something else. So it allowed me to have a space when I first saw him, like, oh, wow, yeah, like, great, he's on the show today, wonderful. It didn't even cross my mind. Right. Because you know me, I if it was that. in my mind, Pierre knows me, if I still was on that shit, you and I would have had a different exchange when you came <laughs> it, and I completely <laughs> forgot it because it wasn't being beat into my head. And That's I understand cool. it comes in comedy too, because when we perform for a white crowd, we may not have to give all the flavor and the jazz and the stats and the hot sauce. But you know, when you come to black crowds, they want your flavor. They want the authenticity, they want the good and they want the bad. So it's just different ways in which we communicate with one another that can be toxic. But I also do want to say that we do when we are there for each other and when we uphold each other and we have love, we we can have love. And I just think we, we need do, to have more of that. We well, do. well, we well also, one of the reasons you don't know about Jason's thing is because it wasn't nothing at the end of the day. And he don't talk about it. Right. Meg and them, they keep talking about it. They keep yapping about it on different pop, pop, situations. It keeps it alive. He's not talking about it no more. So we move on from it. That's the smartest right. thing to do is move on. Don't talk about it no more. It's over. It moved on. However, it is over to him. He moved on from it. He don't talk about it. So I, that's I one of the reasons also, we don't know about it. But you know what, Pierre? I'm going to tell you something. I absolutely agree with that. Right. Well, I'm, you. I'm a genius. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, I also think it's important to note to continue to talk about the major's cases. This is a misdemeanor charge. So I think it's important for all of us, black, white, whoever, to just watch and let it play out in court with the evidence, with the argument. So let's just try to practice doing that. I had an opportunity to interview Megan Good in Memphis, Tennessee a couple of years back. She's such a sweetheart. She doesn't seem like a person that would be involved in a PR relationship. So I also hope that the relationship is real. So I'm sending yeah. energy to Jonathan Majors and also and the victim as well. So both parties and also to you, Jason, 
for your future projects and your existing projects. Thank you for talking to us on this segment of You Be the Judge. Right, so right. remember this though, I'm gonna say this, it ain't never misdemeanor if you black. If you dark skin, you ain't well, never misdemeanor. Well, they gonna you, drag you the shit out of stuff. That. That, and that okay. was the other thing. Right now, right now. They took crazy. all hit, and that's the thing okay. that they all should right. not have done. They should not have taken away, because we have to let things Niggas play they out. Never got misdemeanor. They took away his- That's light skin uh, shit. Uh, Army um, campaign, they took a lot of things. I get misdemeanors. <laughs> no, it, you don't get I think, I think I need to go ahead and pass it back to you, Symphony. Um, okay. <laughs> Joya, Joya, you started it. Oh, I know that the comments are going to be full of tussles. You got the nerve to have a gavel? Oh my God. <laughs> Joya, I got to say, you you really kick things up, but I love it. It drives conversation. I think everybody made valid points. Um, of course, before everybody heads out, I like to know, we like to end, you know, what you have going on and, of course, how people can keep up with you. Jason, of course, I'm going to start with you. I know you already mentioned some things, but for the people that's at the end or probably, you know, listening to it at the end, um, what do you have coming up? And, of course, how can people keep up with all the wonderful things that you're doing? Okay, so... Um... I use Instagram more than I use any other social platform because, uh, you know, I used to be outside as a young man. So I <laughs> am just kind of getting getting adjusted to, to this whole social world. So, um, you know, Instagram is kind of my lane right now. And, and, it, and it's always me except for the fake pages. But um, you can follow me at Jason Mitchell Actor. But I think what's even more important to talk about right now is this program that I started called Dream Seeker. And, you know, when I shot my, um, when I shot Mudbound in New Orleans, they literally had people like peeking over the fence, like, yo, how do I get involved? How do I get involved? How do I get involved? And I didn't know at the time, you know? So uh, I made it my business to educate myself as much as I could in film, because even though, you know, I have a great career and, um, you know, there, there are a ton of other black actors who have great careers, we still fit into this 1%. And no matter if you dribble a basketball or if you run out of a backfield or if you're an actor, rapper, all of that, it's still this 1%. So I felt like it was a bad racket to get into to say, hey, you know, come to Jason Mitchell's acting class and, you know, you're, you're going to have a great career. When I could do you one better, teach you how to shoot a movie, right? Because I feel like, you know, so many people f focus on the face of the watch, that they forget that the gears make it special. You know, mm -hmm. we, we forget that there's hundreds of people behind this close-up that they're pushing in on. Mm -hmm. So um, I started I started Dream Seeker to um, train quality industry professionals in every department by putting them on real sets, allowing them to work for union hours, and ultimately gearing them up to work any place in the world. So um, you can also find, follow that page at I Dream Seek, and you can check out the website too. It's also idreamseek.org and I feel like that's that's really my um my passion and my life's work right now the the last film I just wrapped I I gave two scholarships to um two students that were graduating one from here in Dallas one all the way from from Oregon and they both got to come on set and meet Dream Doll and NLE Chopper and you know bounce around to every different um department to see you know what they would really like to do in film so um Aside from the movies that I'm doing, I, I want to promote that goodness out there and put that out into the world because that's what I'm passionate about. You know, I just want to help my people. I want to teach them how to fish, you know, so um, you go. it's go. that. But also go watch Everything is Both. It's out on Apple TV right now. It's also on Amazon Prime. Uh, Paul Her King will be out on the 6th. Yeah, we got things moving right now, you know? So um, just keep looking for me. I will constantly keep flooding y'all every year. I got like two or three more drops this year. So we're going to keep killing it. You know what I mean? We're we going to keep our foot on their neck. We're not going to let up. We love it. We love to see it. And congratulations on everything. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Joya, since you started all the trouble, I guess I'll come to you, come to you next. <laughs> good trouble, good trouble. No, but what do you have coming up, Joya? And of course, how can people follow you? I am from Memphis, but I spent a large part of my life in Louisiana. I went to Dillard, D-U, but I graduated from uh, LSU. 
So you can find me on Instagram, like Jason, I love using Instagram at justicebay underscore or on Twitter at Justice Bay Joya to keep up with all of my cases and all of the things that I get into in the policy side of things. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Pierre, I'm coming to you. What do you have coming up? And of course, how can people follow you? You can follow me at Comic Pierre, that's C-O-M-I-C-P-I-E-R-R-E, -R -R -E, inbox. But you know me, I'm reckless in the inbox. If you say it, I say it. You know, we talk back and forth, right? I ain't like Jason. He, he ain't got time to be looking too much. But Jason, I will invite <laughs> you, brother, because I want to talk to you about something. So I will Absolutely. be on Instagram. Um, Joya, thank you for coming. Jason, thank you for coming. Thank you, Yama Nick. Give me that energy. You know how I am. I'm coming with it. Um, I'll be at Yonkers Comedy Club this weekend, uh, starting tomorrow through Saturday. Uh, so if you're in the Yonkers, New York area, come see me. And June 27th, I'll be flashy, fly, and in person at the uh, the live comedy hype news taping in Atlanta at the Rich Theater. I'm looking forward to that. So my folks can see me in person, you know, and then y'all can give me the love y'all give me in the streets or get it off your chest, nigga, when I'm in uh, when I'm in the room, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here Pierre said, okay. pull up, pull up, pull up. Okay, well, don't pull up with no gun now. Don't pull up that now. You can pull up okay. with mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help okay. that now. Shit, I, I mean, I, I, I'm on. I'm on YouTube. Okay, I see the recklessness. So, <laughs> if, you, if you're under twenty, if you're under twenty-five, I ain't fucking with you. You got it, brother. You got it. Okay. <laughs> now, if you're grown, we can talk about it. But you're under twenty-five, I ain't. <laughs> I got shows to do. But yeah, so, so check me out on that um, again. So thank y'all. I love it, Yamanika. You know, I like closing out with you because you go around and give your shout outs and all the love. So Yamanika, last and certainly not least, what do you have coming up? And of course, how can people follow you? I want to say, you know, God is so good. He is so amazing. Uh, you know, I can't praise him enough. I thank him uh, for all that he's done. Uh, Jason, I'm so uh, happy you came here. You're doing big time. You don't have to come here with, you know, our little Zoom shit, whatever the hell is happening. Yeah. Uh, so we we appreciate it. We need things like that kind of support so that we can grow as well. So uh, I want you to know it's not lost on us. And despite whatever they may say, I feel about black men. I, I have a special place in my heart for you, young sir. I just followed you. I'm going to join your academy if you have something for old women in their forties. Absolutely, uh, baby. You got you got a personality from from here to Tennessee. We got to put you on. <laughs> I uh, appreciate that. But um, I, I, I really blessings and truly blessings. Um, when I see brothers doing their thing, I'm, I'm there to stand in the gap and support for sure. Um, and my Justice Bay, what a bay. I'm so glad you're here. You're such a blessing. You're, um, you, you bring such great information. Of course, obviously, Symphony does too. You both are just such beautiful, dynamic uh Black women, you make me proud to be Black women. And I'm really impressed with you, young ladies. And keep going, keep going, keep going. I um, can't say enough, you know, and I'm, 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 the future is in good hands with you, young ladies, because you've done your due diligence. Um, Pierre, I'm going to call you after this. We need to talk. Mm -hmm. You know how I feel about you. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's, I'm glad you're in my life, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, same here yeah you are I, I love going back with you I love you're the thorn in my side that I need that I'm gonna keep you know sometimes people <laughs> get shot with a bullet and they go they can't remove the bullet because the bullet go they <laughs> they that. that's that's you that's there you, you. go and I, and I love I'll take it. it I love them um and obviously everybody puts that uh comedy hype on the map and and John and everybody there we really uh appreciate you and next week I cannot wait I will be <laughs> in Atlanta and um I thank God my goal was to lose 25 pounds before I had to come in live and I lost 30 so even All though right. I'm still a big Bertha ain't got no man two cats um mm. I will be 30 pounds lighter hopefully I get another five pounds down so you can check me on everything at Yamanika and if you guys want to see me live I'll be headlining the Lincoln Center on July the 5th so go get your tickets I would love mm -hmm. to see you there Absolutely. Congratulations, Yamanika. I'm super excited to see y'all in person. As mentioned, June 27th, we're going to be live right here in Atlanta at the Rich Theater. So you can get your tickets on Ticketmaster as well as check out all the links down below. It is going to be a show you do not want to miss. It's going to be the first time that we're all under one roof together. So I'm extremely excited for that. 
Again, thank you, Jason Mitchell, for joining us today. This is an amazing topic um, and an amazing show. So thank you all so much. You heard from us. Now we want to hear from you in the comments below. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. Put it in those comments. I can't wait to see these comments. Let me see them. All right. <laughs> Do you know the comedy culture? Play Comedy Hype, the game. Out now.